We're told that we should cut down on eating processed foods for our health. But what is a processed food? I've often heard it said that if it comes in some sort of packaging, it is a processed food. But is everything that comes in a packet really that bad? Let's find out. Hi Carb Dodgers, I'm Dr. Dan Mags. I'm so glad you've landed on my channel, which is all about achieving lasting weight loss through low carb, real food nutrition. If that sounds good to you, then make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you get notified whenever I release new videos. So what exactly are processed foods? Put very simply, a processed food is one that has been altered from its original form. But that's pretty vague as a definition, to be honest. And it's quite obvious that some products are processed significantly more than others. Take this packet of skinless, and boneless chicken thighs. It's been processed to a certain degree, but clearly it's a very different level of processing to these chicken nuggets. Thankfully, we can break things down to help us cut through this a bit more. We can classify food by how much it's been processed. So you can have minimally processed foods like this pork chop, medium processed foods that have been through more processing like these high quality pork sausages, and then you can have ultra processed foods that have been through more extreme mechanical and chemical processes like this smiley faced ham. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at the different categories of food processing. Firstly, we have minimally or unprocessed foods. Take this packet of carrot batons. The carrots have been peeled, cleaned and chopped and this fresh fish fillet. It's been cut and cleaned and is ready for cooking, but there's little change from the original ingredient and most of the nutritional goodness is maintained. Minimal processing techniques usually include refrigeration and freezing, pretty straightforward really. This preserves the ingredients, keeps foods fresh and retains their nutrients. Then there is pasteurization. Liquids like milk or juice are heated to high temperatures to destroy microorganisms. And finally, fermentation, where natural sugars in foods are broken down by various microorganisms. This changes the flavor and texture of the ingredients and preserves nutrients. Kimchi, sauerkraut, some yogurts are example of fermented foods. And so with these minimally processed foods, yes, they do come in packaging, but it's probably the packaging itself and the plastic in that that is the most harmful part of these processed foods. Next, we have the medium processed foods. Foods in the medium category undergo more changes. However, their original ingredients are still basically recognizable. Food processing techniques can include preserving with food additives, where substances are added to foods to keep them fresh or to enhance their color, flavor, or texture. Some additives have been used for centuries like salt, vinegar, smoke, and sugar. These were used to create longer lasting foods such as bacon and various other forms of cured meats. But more recently, we've been adding food colorings like tartazine or cochineal or flavor enhancers like monosodium glutamate. Unfortunately, some additives are linked to negative health consequences and are best avoided. Next, we have high pressure processing, which is where foods are put under very very high pressure to eliminate microorganisms and enzymes. This process is used for foods such as guacamole, salads and dips, fruit juice and smoothies. And then we have milling and grinding. Grains need to be processed to make them easier to eat and digest. Milling separates the floury edible endosperm from the branny outer coverings. Without this additional processing, humans simply wouldn't be able to digest most grains. Milling wheat is a process that has developed over the years from being done by hand to with windmills. Now into massive factories. Flour is a huge industry. Finally, we have canning and blanching. Blanching is where foods like tomatoes or peas are scalded in boiling water or steam for a short time, usually before canning and freezing. And this is to enhance the flavor and extend the life of the food. So in summary, foods in this medium processed category have been altered. They have some advantages as they are convenient, particularly for storage, but the processing of some of these foods can cause a loss of nutrients, particularly water soluble vitamins. There are also concerns around some of the chemicals we add into these foods. Now let's have a look at ultra processed foods. Think of the foods in this category as modern food fakery. They no longer represent the original ingredients and have lost their natural nutritional profile. One food classification system defines ultra processed foods as 
Bear with me on this one. Industrial formulations generated through compounds extracted, derived, or synthesized from foods or food containing substrates, containing five or more ingredients and artificial additives with no whole food components. Now that is quite a mouthful. Put in simple language, ultra processed foods are typically made up of five or more ingredients, often containing many added chemical ingredients like preservatives, sweeteners, and color enhancers. They're made using mechanical industrial processes that can't be undertaken at home. Things like extrusion, high pressure heating, emulsifying and molding, to name just a few. And if you don't know what these processes are, that's kind of the point. They're not normal food techniques. These techniques allow food products to be made to meet specific recipe formulations on a vast scale. In addition to this, they're usually high in refined carbohydrate, poor quality fats from refined inflammatory seed oils, and are of minimal nutritional value. Let's have a look at some examples of ultra processed foods. As you would expect, we've got crisps or chips, chocolate bars, ice creams, pizza, soft drinks, ready meals, instant noodles. They all fall into this category, but many of our everyday family staples are too. Take bread, for example. Your average supermarket sliced loaf is made from complex ingredients and processes not used in kitchens, including emulsifiers, preservatives, and colorings, so it's an ultra processed food. Compare that to the bread that your grandparents would have got from the local bakery 50 years ago. Bread made from simple ingredients such as flour, water, salt, and yeast. Made using a traditional technique on a small scale was an inherently far less processed loaf. What about breakfast cereals? How do they achieve the final breakfast cereal shapes, textures, colors, and coatings that have become all so familiar? Crushing grains, milling and stewing in a large pressure cooker vat with sugar or syrups. Flavorings, colorings, sweeteners are mixed into the pulpy mass before drying on massive conveyor belts. Next, they're shaped, shredded, flaked, puffed, or toasted to produce the desired product shape and texture. And that's before being spray coated or mixed with additional ingredients like chocolate, honey, sugar, malt, dried fruits, marshmallows, nuts, food colorings, and preservatives. And then they're put into boxes with cartoon characters on and aggressively marketed to children. Because, and please, please, please don't forget this. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, children. So why process foods at all? Humans have been processing foods for millennia. This was essential to survive food shortages, to colonize and develop civilizations in very different habitats as our ancient ancestors spread out across the world. They would roast, grind and soak foods to make them edible, preserve foods by smoking, sun drying or with salt. So clearly there are some major advantages of processing foods that we really want to keep. We process foods to make them more convenient convenient, to preserve freshness, extend their life, and to make food more appetizing. All good reasons. But we've taken things oh so much further than our ancestors ever did. So let's just look at this from a different perspective. What are the benefits to the food industry? And I can summarize this pretty quickly. It's to maximize their profit. Food products made from lower cost ingredients at scale are cheaper to manufacture and generate larger profits. Producing food in factories with generic ingredients and processes also helps to achieve recipe consistency and helps extend the product shelf life. Longer lasting, easier to transport, and store, again, all means a boost to profits. Finally, let's consider the convenience aspects of these foods. Processing has literally changed our whole relationship with food. Contrary to popular belief, modern processed food products took off really slowly when first introduced in the 1950s. They were expensive, and consumers also needed a whole series of brand new kitchen appliances to make use of them. Take freezers and microwaves, for example. These gadgets weren't commonplace in the home at the time. So advertisers went to work. They gave the new foods an aura of sophistication and class, suggesting that the microwave dinners and instant drinks were something to aspire to, to show off your prosperity. Adverts in magazines and on television emphasized the benefits of these modern, time-saving new foods. Products were pitched as the best option for taking care of your family, keeping everyone in your home healthy and happy. But more than that, they promised a ticket to freedom from kitchen drudgery for women. The mammoth marketing and advertising efforts ultimately resulted in the immersion of convenience foods in the market and paved the way to our changed food culture and family dynamic as women were able to enter education and the workforce like never before. So it's clear that society has enjoyed great benefits from embracing food convenience. And we have embraced convenience foods wholeheartedly 
to the point that they are now a major component of our everyday diets. This has produced a big change to the way we shop, prepare and eat meals. However, the changes have also been a significant factor in our health and obesity epidemics. So should we worry about processed foods? Well, yes, eating foods like these is linked to serious diseases and health conditions. More and more of us are on track to suffer from long-term health conditions linked to our lifestyle. Unhealthy diets based around ultra-processed foods are one-off, if not the leading contributor to these long-term diseases. Whilst other factors like sedentary lifestyles, smoking, drinking, and poverty are part of the problem, the food we eat is the major culprit. We're eating our way into ill health. Preventable health conditions such as cancers, diabetes, heart disease, place a major financial burden on our health sectors. 70% of health spending in England alone. More importantly, they take an enormous toll on our quality of life. I could go on for some time about the dangers of eating ultra processed foods, but I'm not going to because we're planning more videos on this topic in the near future. But hopefully you've now got a better idea about the different levels of processing food and hopefully understand that everything that comes in a packet isn't necessarily bad. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already and you want to hear about when we release the follow up videos to this one, do make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.